So in class we did 2362 the normal way with inspection, and I promised you I would show you how to do it without inspection. So if you don't like these parts where you just have to say, well, we know this goes that way, so we'll make it negative. If that bothers you, you can use the definition of the unit vector to do it without having to do those, those parts where you just sort of think about it. Um, this is sort of more of a brute force mathematical way to do the problem. So this is 2362, no inspection. Okay? <clears throat> so the problem is the same. I'll set it up quickly because you all saw it in class. We have on the x, we have on the y axis. We have four charges. Each charge is uh, 10 microcoulombs, and they're on a rectangle of 0.15 meter height and 0.6 meter width. And now writing it on here, each one is 10 microcoulombs. And the question is, what is the force on the charge at the origin? So to help our notation, I labeled them 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the force on 1, just like before, is equal to the sum of the force of charge 2 on number 1 plus the force of charge 3 on number 1 plus the force of charge 4 on number 1. So that part is the same. What we're going to do then is go through and calculate uh, each one of these, and we're not going to use inspection. inspection. We're going to use the definition of the unit vector. Okay. So remember I told you about this unit vector. Say we're writing the unit vector r21. We put that little hat on it. That means it's a vector with a magnitude of 1 pointing in the direction from 2 to 1. So R2, 1 would look kind of like this. But really what we got to think about is what is the definition of R2, 1? You can define it like this. You could say it is the vector R2, 1. The actual vector that goes from 2 to 1 divided by the distance R2, 1. When you're just calculating force magnitude, you put the distance between the two points um, in the bottom, and we would have called it r. So there it's just a length. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking the vector, which has that length, and a direction, and we're dividing it by the length. If we make that substitution, that makes Coulomb's law look different. It ends up looking like this. The force is Coulomb's constant, uh, q1, q2, and just to be consistent here, I'll do the force 2, 1, q1, q2. And if we put this in for the unit vector, then we actually end up with 3 r2, 1 down here. It's actually cubed in the bottom. Okay? You're used to thinking of Coulomb's law as squared in the bottom. It's cubed if you write it this way, because instead of writing the unit vector, you write the vector r2, 1. And then you can see how in the end it really is just the distance squared. This is the distance r with the direction divided by the distance r cubed. One of those distances canceled. And it's really still 1 over r squared. But you write it this way, and you solve the problem this way. And it actually makes it, in some ways, makes it easier to do. So let's use this form and see if it gives us the right answer. Okay. So first, f21. Okay. Uh, 10 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs squared, 10 microcoulombs after our controversy there. This separation, R21, is 0.15 meters squared. But now we're going to cube it. So 0.15 meters, not squared, 0.15 meters cubed. And now we write the vector R21. That is simply a vector going from here to here. So if you're going to describe this as a vector, what is it? It's a magnitude of 0.15 meters, and it's pointing in negative y. Right? So you say that's all times um, negative 0.15 meters on the y, which is the j hat direction. And when you multiply all that out, you actually get uh, what you got before. It's equal to minus 40 newtons j hat. We can also do this for f uh, 4 y. distance of this one, it is 0.6 meters cubed, but then the vector, 
what is the vector of r for one? It's this. There's r for one. Well, it's 0.6 and it's pointing in the negative x direction. So it's negative 0.6 i And in the end, that gives us the same answer we got for before for f for one minus 2.5. So there we did it in a slightly different way, where this 0.6 canceled that 0.6 and it looks square. It doesn't look like it helped us that much. You could argue that, well, inspection where we're guessing the direction is sort of the same as saying which direction is r, is the r vector. It's really not that different. Where it becomes different, or more useful, possibly, is when you calculate f31. Okay. So let's look at f31. Same thing for 2, 1, and 4, 1, but it's a very different way to do it for 3, 1. All right, good luck.